A, go with gut instinct. If you don't want to work with them or for them, just, I tell you what, just walk away from them. One thing we do is if I know if I can't give the best service to someone, I have a lot of contacts. We collaborate with a lot of local businesses, so we will refer them on to them. Not that they're a bad customer, they just don't fit well with us, and I know someone else can do a much better job for them. So just be aware of that. That's always an option. But also that you can choose to say no. You can just say, I'm really sorry. I know we won't work well together. Good clients and customers will respect that and be grateful for it. Hi and welcome to Business Rainbows and Unicorns, where there's no such thing as failure if you don't try. This podcast is specifically for business owners or wannabe business owners. Say you've got a side hustle or you've got a passion for something and you think it'd be absolutely amazing or you see people that do amazing things with their passions and what they enjoy doing. Well, you can do that. So please subscribe and we hope you enjoy listening to this episode. Hi and thanks for listening to Business Rainbows and Unicorns where there's no such thing as failure if you don't try. Now today we're talking about customers. Good customers, bad customers, is the customer always right? If you've been in business a while you'll have come across all kinds of customers or clients if you call them customers, clients, patients, whoever they are you will have come into contact with all of them. Now if you've not started your business yet you might think oh what's my ideal customer and you might go well everybody everyone's my ideal customer. I can promise you they're really not but I did exactly the same so this is all from experience So I first set out and I was like, everyone will use me. I can do this. I can cater to everyone's needs. I can tell you now, you can't, you won't, and you don't want to. It's a bit like friends. If you think about friendships and people you get on with, there's people you get on well with and there's people you don't. Not in a drama kind of end of the world kind of way. They're just not your people. Customers and clients are exactly the same. There's some people you will never work well with as much as you try and forge that relationship. And I can tell you now... That money is not worth chasing. You might want to chase it. You might think, oh, they'll pay loads. But from experience, randomly, the ones that pay the least, then their expectations are really, really high. The ones that pay more tend to let you get on with it. However, the ones that pay and are just an absolute nightmare, you need to sit and weigh up. Is the admin worth it? Is the hassle worth it? Is depending on what the kind of relationship they are and how you work. Is it worth just going against the grain? Because that's ultimately what you're doing. If you're trying to forge a relationship and customer out of someone that just does not work how you work, it will feel against the grain. It won't feel natural. It will be a stress and they're just customers you don't want. So what makes a good customer? Well, first of all, they pay. Now, if you've not started out in business and I don't want to be the person that pursues your bubble, but not everyone pays. For whatever reason, if you're really, really lucky and you're on top of your um, money, you take deposits, you're organised, however you work, the majority of people will pay, but there will always be someone. Now, from experience of tradesmen, I work with a lot of tradesmen, really, really good tradesmen that have been in business 10, 20, 30 years. They have come across one person or one customer or one client that hasn't paid. Nine times out of 10, it's not for any fault of their own, but the customer will make their life a nightmare to avoid paying now. And that's what you want to do. You just want to decide what's your walk away point. Theirs was there was so much hassle, it was taking more hassle to chase and argue and various different reasons. So they just had to walk away and lose quite a lot of money in some cases. So just be aware when you're taking customers on and this is where you need to get the communication right and the knowledge right of just forging that good relationship with someone so you know whether it's taking a deposit up front or their expectations of when to pay but you just know they will be a good customer, but you need to set the ground rules, you need to set the boundaries, you need to set the terms, whether you have terms and conditions and how you work it. Some people work in contracts. Hands up, I've gone against the grain completely. So I set up originally as a virtual assistant. There's a lot of knowledge out there. You must have a contract, you must do this, you must do that. We don't. 
we work from month to month with people for our regular clients or our monthly clients we work from month to month so ultimately if it's not working or they might want to bring that service in-house it's a month's notice if that depending on whether they give notice there's nothing worse I feel than working to a contract that is three months notice and you're just is causing you too much stress and hassle neither of you for whatever reason won't want to be in that contract However, for some people, for peace of mind, they want that contract, they want that agreement, so they will set it up to start with. But again, it all comes down to communication. If you're regularly communicating with your customers and clients, you will build that trust and that relationship. The good customer needs to have that trust in you. They need to know that what you're doing and they've taken you on because you've got that knowledge and that expertise in that area. Especially if it's a client and you're outsourcing that service to you, that they need to take you on knowing that trust and that knowledge. If not, then it will. that's where the communication or the trust falls down and the relationship breaks down. So if they can do that, then it will work really, really well. If they can't, and they don't respect your time, they micromanage what you do, they're not trusting in you, then it will fall down and they then become a bad customer. Now from experience, I've had that previously, that you've been taken on, someone's worked with you, but they don't they don't trust what you do. So if I take my experience in social media, for example, the agreement was just to give you a bit of background with social media, we work how the client works. So we don't have fixed we will post this many times, we will do this, we will do that. We do, but we tailor it to each individual client. Now, the bonus of outsourcing and using us for your social media is because we've got that expertise. We know about hashtags, we know about when to post, what to post, how to get your tone of voice and your business out there, what works well for you, this platform or that platform, whatever it might be. However, the issue being, if you don't respect or the client doesn't respect that which is what we had we ended up being provided content that was illegal when I say illegal don't get excited it wasn't that exciting it was just screenshots of someone else's website but ultimately there was copyright issues now their argument was I pay you to do what I say my argument is I do not do what's illegal or doesn't work so we shook hands and we parted ways but they didn't have that trust in our knowledge and our expertise they just wanted to post stuff fair play if you just want to post stuff with one word explaining what it is crack on and hands up you don't need us to do that for you so you would have been or they would have been overpaying for what they actually wanted us to do however they wanted to pay more so we posted what wasn't right so that's where you need to hold your hands up and say I don't want you as a customer we don't need you as a customer and actually it goes completely against your company values so when you set up you need to understand what are your terms what are your values what's your mission statement what do you want to do because you will work differently with everybody or you work the same for yourself and that is your boundaries that is how you work it might be that you might only be available nine to one every day you might have patients it might be an appointment based setup so if a customer comes in and says i want an evening appointment if you don't work evenings don't work evenings don't change for that customer nine times out of ten i can guarantee if you do they'll cancel or won't turn up anyway or they'll delay it or change it so just be aware of what your boundaries and your terms are of how you want to work with your customers and as long as you communicate that correctly they will work with you if they don't want to work with you do you know what hands up going back to the scenario I've just gone through you don't want them as a customer anyway some businesses you can't choose your customers and these are the type of businesses where they walk in off the street you might be a cafe for example you then need to consider how you handle them so as an example going back to is the customer always bright we've got a few clients at different cafes we've got customers that come in looking for problems or they've got customers that come in looking for problems it's then at the point of where do you charge for the service I've known a couple of uh, clients that have actually picked up the food and asked them to leave and asked them not to come back again because of the issues they've caused because actually if they're upsetting staff or they're not the type of people you want in your business, you have the right to refuse service. I think there's a film and it's uh, there's a sign up 
and they flip the sign and says, we can have the right to refuse service to anyone. You still have that. You do not have to serve someone who's a bad customer. It might be that they're being rude, insulting, or just generally just making life a misery. You don't need that in your business. If you set up your own business and run your own business, you want to be happy in it. If I wanted to be unhappy in business, I'd go back to corporate. I was really unhappy there and I can stay there for as long as I want. It's guaranteed salary, but also I'm really, really unhappy. It's not why I set up my own business. So it's just understanding that you don't have to take all of that on. Now, I promise you, if you set your boundaries and your terms and you put start putting some of that out there, you will then attract your ideal customer. So your ideal customer might be someone who you know for a fact where they shop, what their age is, what their lifestyle's like, what kind of person they are. If I spoke to you about a lorry driver, for example, if you look at service stations, what you can get in service stations and what's available, what kind of lifestyle that lorry driver's got, not a lot of time with family, looking for quick and easy food, that might not be someone who you you will service very well as a customer on the flip side you might have an ideal customer that is a lorry driver what do they do in their time off do they really want to treat their family when they're away from family what service or product do they need so the more you niche it down the more you get an idea of your ideal customer on the flip side you might be someone who helps out busy mums so you might particularly want a female customer base someone who's got three or four children they're really really busy they've not got time for something but your service might suit that and help them out so then your conversation is very different to a busy mum to a lorry driver the tone of voice would be really different but to you if you're looking for a male lorry driver your tone won't fit a busy mum and they might be a bad customer to you so a bad customer might not necessarily be someone who's horrible or nasty it just might be someone who doesn't suit what you do and the service you provide so the more you niche that down the more you get an idea of who you really really want to target where are they looking and it helps with your marketing where are you promoting your business and what you're doing so on that side of it just have a real idea and just don't go into it blind don't go into business thinking you're not gonna find your ideal customer don't say yes to everybody also go back and ask for reviews from people there's unfortunately a bit of an issue where people can write reviews whether they've been on your business or not We've got the unfortunate incidents of a village where one of the businesses will go around leaving bad reviews for all the other businesses because they do similar. So just be aware there are not nice people out there. With someone who's speaking from experience who is all moonbeams and rainbows in my head so I think everybody's lovely until proven otherwise. It's just to be aware of there's not and there's some really not nice people out there but Again, if you communicate with those people and you get an expectation of what they want, when they want it, how they want to work, you can say no to them, but also you will then find your really ideal customers of who you want to work with. So just be aware of that. So when you're going out, if you're not going in blind. So if you need help with your ideal customers or an idea, or even if you've got someone you're not sure about, a go with gut instinct if you don't want to work with them or for them just i tell you what just walk away from them one thing we do is if i know if i can't give the best service to someone i have a lot of contacts we collaborate with a lot of local businesses so we will refer them on to them not that they're a bad customer they just don't fit well with us and i know someone else can do a much better job for them so just be aware of that that's always an option but also that you can you can choose to say no. You can just say, I'm really sorry. I know we won't work well together. Good clients and customers will respect that and be grateful for it. So just make sure it's going back to that communication and trust that you're building a good relationship with everyone. I've done that with people. They've then referred others back to me because they understand that they'd be a better fit. So we're always here. If you've got any questions or even if you've got a customer you, you really don't know what to do, if you don't know what your gut's telling you, you don't know how to work with them, drop us a message. We will always help. And if there's someone you know struggling with customers, maybe they're just setting it up, they're not sure, they keep being asked who their ideal customer is and they're not really sure, we can help with that.
like and share the podcast as always and give us a subscribe which is always great for a small podcast like us but also our dms are always open so drop us a message if there's anything if you've got any questions and you're not sure where to go with it or not sure where to go with that certain customer thanks for listening as always if you've got any questions give us a shout or if you've got any stories of customers please let us know because a is great for content and b we can always sympathize with people who are having issues so thanks for listening and see you next week thanks for listening to this episode we really hope you've enjoyed it if you have please share with a friend who you think needs a bit of help with starting a business or even their small business which they've already got going please like and subscribe to our podcast which always helps a small business or small podcast like us And check the show notes. We all have everything in there relating to the episode, which you might need, might want to read, and links to anyone we've interviewed and certain subjects we've spoken about. And thanks for listening.